And meanwhile, another day and another disastrous inflation report this morning. The latest painful reminder coming from the PPI report showing inflation climbed nearly 11.5% at the wholesale level. And the jobs boom seems to be going bust as the number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits last week hit the highest level in eight months. This likely seals the deal for another huge rate hike later this month. Joining me now is the president of American Action Forum, Douglas Holtz Eakin. It's always great to see you. And, and things are getting worse, Thank not you, better, for the inflation picture here. And we should also mention that the Fed Fund's futures are telling us that the, the street is now looking for a 100 basis point hike, a full point when the Fed meets. What do you think? Well, I certainly thought that the bad news in yesterday's Consumer Price Index report was the fact that the core only fell by a tenth of a percentage point. So we're, we're now looking at the, the kind of inflation that's in shelter and other services and is uh, firmly entrenched and doesn't move quickly like uh, gasoline and, and food prices do. And today's report is a reminder that that durability is uh, in the pipeline. I mean, We've got double-digit commodities inflation. We've got uh, finished goods at 11 percent. Um, you know, th that, that really says that going forward, it, this inflation is not going to dissipate quickly. It's going to require uh, real work on the part of the Federal Reserve, more tightening. And I think the Fed futures are telling you exactly the right story. Uh, yeah. They said they were going to get to neutral as expeditiously as possible. We still have negative real rates. That's not close to neutral. So they have a ways to go. It, there was talk even this morning that there could be a surprise decision uh, from the Fed, similar to what we saw back in 2008 during the financial crisis. We shall see. But you know, Larry Summers says that we're going to get out of this mess, but not without entering a recession. Listen. I think it is unlikely that we will, very unlikely, that we will see inflation come down to target range without um, a significant economic uh, downturn. Is he right? Well, I certainly, you know, you, you just heard Ed say he's expecting mild recession. Uh, I, I just saw the Wells Fargo economic outlook. They have a mild recession in 2023. Uh, if you look across the forecasting industry, most people put a pretty high probability on something early next year to mid next year in the way of a downturn. The disagreement is only how severe it might be. And um, uh, you can only hope that if we have a recession, it, it's mild. And we can only hope that uh, in the same way that they made inflation worse, the, this administration and Congress don't make the recession worse. Uh, mm -hmm. Policy errors got us here. Can't make any more policy errors going forward. Yeah, the White House doesn't use the word transitory anymore. That is for sure. Uh, there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's this new survey showing that Americans are putting important plans on hold this year because of the inflation issue. Big decisions, buying a house, a car, even getting married. What kind of impact do you think this is going to have down the road? Because it's not just the recession talk that's really heating up, I'm hearing. Now you've got people discussing the fact that there might start to be layoffs at companies' job losses because of the inflationary picture? Well, I think on the, on the household side, we're finally seeing the behavior start to match the sentiment. Sentiment's been in the tank for quite a while. We're, you know, we're at 40-year lows in consumer confidence. But households continue to spend, continue to make those plans. They're now dialing them back. And that's not good news for the growth rate in the economy. There, there's no question about that. Uh, the real question now is, can businesses keep things going? Uh, so far, there hasn't been a real dent in business investment spending, and that's uh, uh, kept the, the in, you know, sort of manufacturing sector going, the service sector going. That's kept the jobs going. We're getting a couple hundred thousand jobs a month still. I think in the near term, we're not going to see a widespread layoffs. We're going to see all those, those unfilled vacancies just disappear. Firms are going to say, you know, we don't really need those people we thought we were going to need. Let, let's take those jobs off the board. Poof, they're gone and hope we don't have to lay off people who are actually already here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you look at uh, like a Tesla story or you know other companies that are already saying we're going to yeah. be cutting, you know, positions, it, it, I think there's a little bit of nervous not there. Not a lot, but I think there is a little bit about what that does to the economy in particular as we're getting ready for this recession that we're probably already in, which they'll tell us later on because that's how it goes. Uh, Douglas Holtz, Egan, it's great to see you. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you.